we'll just kind of get right into it here. Uh, the big news of, of Monday is the reported hiring of Chris Partridge, which with the Michigan football program, obviously, if that's a name you've heard before, it's because he did spend four years here uh, as a staffer under Jim Harbaugh 2016 through 2019. Uh, coached the special teams. He coached the linebackers, I think, for two years, and then the safeties for two years. And that's kind of where we're at with it right now. We don't know if he's moving into a, um, you know, a defensive staffer role. We don't know if he's maybe more of an off-field guy, like filling the departed uh, Biff Pogi, um associate head coach role. And this was a super chat here from right off the bat. And we will do other things we will talk about today. We're going to talk about basketball. We will talk about uh, the whole last segment. We're going to do Q&A. We're going to do questions. So be sure uh, to get your questions in. We will put a pin in that and come back to it at the end of the show. But uh, Ben leads us off here today uh, with a $10 super chat that plays into our opening segment. This is any any chance Chris Partridge is coming to replace Biff Pogey as Harbaugh's right-hand man, or would that limit his impact on recruiting, director of recruiting, and or NIL? Question mark. I, Clayton, I'll go to you on this, but I'll just say it seems like uh, knowing the ace recruiter that he was, him and Sharon Moore were actually quite the one-two punch there for a couple of years. Uh, it seems like if he's not in a coaching role, that it would kind of be a squandered uh, use of his services. But at the same time, this staff is full right now, especially on defense. I mean, Mike Elston is still here. George Chilo is still here. I know there are rumors going around about maybe one, uh, a guy – departing jay harbaugh steve Klinkscale. uh we don't expect those guys to leave but i guess let's let's discuss what partridge brings and kind of reintroduce him to our our uh, our fans here yeah i'd say at least not Klinkscale for sure um but yeah i, I think he's going to be in an on-field role that would be my guess and matt zenitz from on three reported that he would be as such um so you know, I would kind of think that that's where Jim Harbaugh goes. And that's a huge, great point by you with you don't want to tie one hand behind Chris Partridge's back. I mean, he's such a good recruiter to limit him to only on campus recruiting, I think would be a disservice to him, the program, all that. Now, maybe he says, um, you know, well, I'm looking to get a job, you know, somewhere. So maybe this would just be like a one year type of thing. But I don't think that's the case. Um, now, we'll, you know, so it seems like a departure would be imminent here. Uh, George Hilo's name has kind of been thrown around there, but nothing confirmed. Yeah, here's the thing that's interesting when it comes to Jim Harbaugh is you see these NCAA rules about to change, uh, potentially at least, and it seems like it's heading in that direction where analysts would be able to coach on the field or, you know, off-field support staff is, would be able to help on the field. Could Jim Harbaugh, who is known to get creative with this sort of thing, um, get creative with this and, and say, okay, well, Partridge is on the field. Maybe let's just say, for example, George Hilo's not, but he can still coach uh, on the field during practice once this rule gets changed. So that might be something to watch too. But uh, I would think there would be a departure, and Chris Partridge would end up on uh, on the field for Michigan coaching. Uh, you, in terms of recruiting, I don't know if he needs a title necessarily for that. You already have recruiting coordinator Mike Elston. You already have some recruiting staffers. So I think you just kind of roll with those guys and let that ace recruiter get you back into New Jersey, get some top level guys there, get you, uh, you know, he, he did a really good job in the South as well. And you mentioned him and Sharon Moore as kind of a tag team. They, they were able to get Dax Hill out of there, um, out of, you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma. So there's a, a lot of opportunities. You see the graphic for the people on the YouTube there is he was a secondary recruiter for Dax Hill, but everybody else primary recruiter. Uh, and there's plenty other guys as well, but Rashawn Gary, Chris Hinton, Aubrey Solomon, Cesar Ruiz, um, you know, those guys worked out to varying degrees, but he, uh, he helped with a lot of other guys too. And, you know, he's just kind of that guy that uh, seems to connect really well with these co uh, recruits. And, um, you know, it's kind of weird. Some guys are better recruiters than others. Some guys have it. Some guys don't. Uh, seems like Chris Partridge has it. So uh, it's a big ad. Yeah. And I know that the, uh, those pre 2021 Michigan teams, certainly even the pre COVID year teams, they had their share of issues, but uh, Chris Partridge wasn't one of them. I think he was actually kind of a breath of fresh air when he was with the program because he was, you know, he was a bit of an outsider. He came from the high school ranks. He coached Jabril Peppers uh, at uh, mm -hmm. 
Paramus uh, Catholic High School in New Jersey. Obviously, a ton of guys have come through, uh, came through that program into Michigan. Uh, again, people forget. I mean, Jay, Jay Harbaugh gets his flowers for Michigan special teams. Jay kind of grabbed the baton from from Chris Partridge and uh, who I thought did a really good job with those units uh, earlier on when he was when he was running them. So, you know, as far as the hire goes, it makes sense. You know, and it also uh, I don't want to say it's I hesitate to say it's a it's a cautionary tale for guys like Josh Gaddis, but it's also why you don't burn bridges on the way out of town. Um, I think there was some consternation. Uh, there was some th- I, I had heard some chatter pre me being at the Wolverine that you know, there was kind of people tripping over each other's feet to maybe be the next in line to Don Brown at defensive coordinator. And I think that if, if Chris Partridge had been someone who had that tab on him, that he may have stuck around at Michigan a little bit longer, but um, he didn't, he went, went to old miss and worked with, uh, worked with Lane Kiffin and, and got some experience coaching in the sec, uh, the sec West, which is, you know, one of the tougher divisions, certainly to play in, in college football, but also to recruit in, uh, in college football with Bama and, and LSU and some of the other schools uh, that you contend with there. So, yeah, I mean, if we'll see what the role winds up being, whether it's, whether it's safeties or whether it's linebackers, again, um, you know, if there's some kind of shuffling that is going to take place there, um, you, you know, it's, it makes sense to me. And if he winds up just being, you know, the, the consigliere to Jim Harbaugh and you know, replacing the Biff Pogey role, I think he's qualified for that too. And and there's upward trajectory there. Biff Pogey, uh, Biff Pogey, sorry, was able to parlay that into a head coaching job uh, at Charlotte. So I'm sure Partridge maybe, uh, I don't know if he wants to run his own program one day, but um, this, this is a place where opportunities are plenty. And even, um, you know, people forget, maybe people forget that, you know, when a guy like Ed Warner came in, uh, you know, he was an analyst and then got elevated to an on-field role. And, you know, some there, there are always twists and turns and, and somehow they always, they always find a way, but uh, Chris Partridge was a good guy uh, and, and a great coach, uh, a terrific recruiter. And, Again, uh, it changes a little bit now, given how NIL is impacting some of these recruitments. But you know, that's a guy who I think is uh, as good as his job as you can as you could possibly ask for, uh, given what he's been able to do in the past. So, uh, certainly in favor of it. Uh, again, it's it's kind of awkward in that uh, it seems like there's someone is either on their way out or that hasn't been decided yet, but. Um, I guess we'll ultimately wind up seeing what happens. Any other thoughts on, on the Chris Partridge move? Yeah, I got a Chris Partridge story. Um, so they have the Chad Tuff auction every year. Um, and back in 2018, my dad bid on lunch or dinner with uh, an assistant coach. And he bid on two of them, Chris Partridge and Mike Zordich. Um, and they actually weren't going for that much. Um, but you know, he bid on him. Okay. He wins them both o- almost on accident. We were at a wedding. Uh, so we're kind of bidding on him. You know, we're not really on our phones much. turns out he wins both. So they set it up where, okay, you're going to go into the building. You get to watch part of practice. This was not supposed to be part of the deal, but it was like, well, since you bought, since you got two of them, let's just knock them out, go to practice, watch some of that, eat dinner with these guys. And they'll show you a little film in their offices. So got to watch film with him, Zordich and Jay Harbaugh was kind of a bonus because he was just in there. I think his office was being renovated at the time and CP Chris Partridge could not have been nicer. uh, And I can kind of see why recruits like him laid things out very, very easily. We were watching practice back on film and it was just easy to understand that sort of thing. Um, And it was just super nice to talk to us or whatever and and give us his time because they're busy during fall camp. So that's my Chris Parcher story. Excited to uh, reunite with Chris Parcher. I know you were on the beat, obviously, at, you know, during his tenure and everything. But everybody you talk to is like, yeah, we love Chris Partridge. And I think you're right about the burning bridges part. He did not do that <laughs> at all. In fact, I think Michigan probably would have liked to keep him. But, you know, he's a guy that wants to rise and wanted to coordinate his own defense. And Michigan didn't give him that opportunity at the time. And, you know, that's kind of what you do. And now he's looking for something else. And I think... He was a great fit at Michigan. There's a lot of trust between he and Jim Harbaugh. 
you know, Jim's the one that brought him back into the uh, college coaching ranks after uh, his second stint at Paramus. He was at the Citadel before that, I believe. Um, so, yeah, just, uh, you know, I, I think it's it's good to get him back. We'll see exactly what the official announcement is. We'll see, you know, if there's some shuffling there. Harbaugh, I mean, there is all sorts of precedent for him getting really creative with his staff. And, um, you know, even just before spring ball, you remember two years ago, Matt Weiss comes in, George Hilo goes from safeties to linebackers. Jay, uh, no, Jay was still on offense. Jay goes back to tight ends. Ron Bellamy goes to safeties after he was hired as wide receiver. It's like there's all sorts of opportunity or, uh, you know, potential out there for what Jim's going to do. I don't think it's going to be that crazy because it's just kind of a defensive guy and you would think you'd shuffle it on the defensive side, but you just never know. You know, it could get crazy. <laughs> yeah, and Chris Partridge is an example of two. Well, I'm actually glad that we have this parallel to make now and why, you know, you don't um, – I know there were some people out there sort of underwhelmed by the Kirk Campbell hire because of, of a perceived lack of pedigree or whatever it was. But, you know, Chris Partridge was an assistant at Paramus Catholic, then went to Lafayette, then worked at the Citadel, and then went back and led Paramus for, I think, five years, was Michigan's director of, uh, I believe, player personnel in 2015, yeah. and then had the on-field roles with them. And, again, sometimes it's just a matter of opportunity – uh, I think that climbing the ladder at times is a little bit overrated because some guys just have some guys just have it. Some guys just have the chops for the job. And I think that Jim Harbaugh has done a good job of identifying a lot of those types of guys. Um, you know, Partridge was one and and now is one. I would say one of the more coveted assistants across the country. Um you know, who's to say that Kirk Campbell doesn't uh and again, I think Kirk Campbell, again, everything we've heard positive you know positive momentum there and and they feel like that's going to keep pushing them forward it's just um it, it goes back to kind of trusting the uh you know these guys know football jim harbaugh knows football and and when you have guys with these leadership traits and you know recruiting you know people make so much out of recruiting recruiting is relationship building recruiting is you know having a conversation and relating to young people some guys you know, you don't necessarily have to go from high school to an, uh, a division two to a low power five to, you know, you don't have to climb the ladder all the time. Sometimes you just have it. So um, good on Chris Partridge, good on Michigan. I've It's always felt like one way or another, those two parties would find each other at some point. Again, I thought maybe it might be when Michigan needed a defensive coordinator after Don Brown, I thought he would have been one of the first calls made. Maybe he was. Uh, we'll see, but uh, if he winds up being added to this, you know, looking like he's being added to the staff, uh, I mean, whoever it is that that is on their way out the door, um, minus you know Mike Elston, Steve Klinkscale, uh, it's hard to hard to argue that Chris Partridge isn't an upgrade. So we'll see what happens with that. Thank you so much for watching. For more videos from the Wolverine, whether it be football, basketball, recruiting, live shows, and more, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for the latest.